What is good, ladies and gentlemen of the internet? Welcome back to the Off the Top podcast. My name is Tom. Colin, C Note. Press subscribe. New episodes every week. You can follow us on socials, Twitter. We post all the clips there. We're talking about all the new drops and all the news real time on Twitter. So if you want to keep up, follow us on socials. We got another busy week. We got, I mean, we knew it couldn't last long. Kanye's back on the episode. Yep, He's all over yep. the place. He had like a really weird interview with a guy, the download I've never heard of, but it like created uh, so many viral clips, it's insane. Yeah, I mean, shout out to the guy. Everybody's hating on him for I mean for whatever glazing him up, but at the same time, it's Kanye. You gotta you gotta do what you can to get what you can out of him. And he got mad clips, like it's crazy, yeah. so that's what people were mad at him for for glazing. I thought yeah, it was because he was so. talking during the song at first, and no one had the song <laughs> with good quality. Right, <laughs> right, right. I mean, that too, to that too, right. I mean, Kanye put out the song like 20 hours later, but like for 20 hours, everyone was listening to like that remix with guys <laughs> with, talking in the back. Yelling, oh, it's yeah. up. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I thought that's why people yeah. were mad, but we got a yeah. bunch of great clips from that. We have Kanye calling J. Cole a pussy, saying mm-hmm. a bunch of crazy shit about Drake. Like, Kanye is just wildin'. He's out here. We have a new Eminem album coming this year. We did call that, and it's officially been announced. And I even said, I bet he's going to call it or announce it at the draft because he was out with Roger Goodell at the draft. And he did. And then he didn't. Well, he didn't, but then he did. It was like an ad that played on the draft, right? I missed it. I missed it. I I seen it on Twitter. I don't know. I I must have looked down for 30 seconds and missed it. But I guess it was like a commercial. Yeah, an ad, like a little 30-second ad that he ran. I don't think we can play it because we'll probably get destroyed. By yeah. whoever, but um, UMG. yeah, yeah, UMG Lucian. or whoever, but Lucian, Lucian yeah, Luci- <laughs> Lucian's gonna come for us, but uh, yeah. nah, so I mean, I guess we could talk about that, yeah. So Eminem announced his new album, yeah, The Death of Slim Shady, um, great or album, title. Coup de Gras, title. Coup de Gras, how you pronounce it, Coup, Coup, I, I would say Coup, I think, Coup, Coup de Gras, I don't know, I think it's, French. I think, I think that's how you say it, so. Um, we're not we're not sure if one of them is an album title, one of them is a single title, or what. But that's what he teased. Um, yeah, yeah the, I don't know. What are your first thoughts on it? The death of Slim Shady. That's the name, or is the coup de gras part of the name of the album? Like, is that See, all? We don't know yet. We don't know yet. Because I think the death of Slim Shady, period. That's a perfect 2024 Eminem album title. Yeah. Which also makes me think he's going to come I mean, in and rap like some old Slim Shady shit. That's what coup de gras before means. Before he kills it, means, it all. Yeah, it means like the end, like the the final ending, the killing of it is literally what coup de gras means. But, I feel like um, Slim Shady's been dead for 15 years since relapse, basically. Yeah, I mean, yeah, really though, when was the last time we heard like some Slim Shady, like Kamikaze? There was Maybe, a little on Kamikaze, I guess, yeah, you're right. A little the bit ringer. of Slim Shady, There's I guess you could call players. it, but... That might be more so like Eminem, if you want to call it that. But that's um, Marshall Mathers on Kamikaze. There's like four different right. That's so. yeah, well, who knows at this <laughs> point who is who. But uh, uh, now nah, I'm excited. Like I don't know. I I hope it's kind of like a <clears throat> straight up like concept, straight concept album. Maybe about like his whole career, what he's seen throughout his career. It's actually crazy because this one girl on Twitter. Um, oh, dude. Let me find her m- quick so I can shout her out. This shit is crazy. Because when you sent me this link, the album was announced, me and Kyle were talking about it, because we were texting during the NFL draft, and I was like, dude, I think he's going to announce an album. And then I'm going to put it in the, the doc stage. Quick. There's no album. And then Colin sends me this link, and I was like, wait, what? This? And it was from, like, three years ago. Some lady, like, made a tweet, like, this would be the perfect title for an Eminem album. The death is at the very shady. bottom. Oh, yeah, I see it right here. I'll, I'll pull up the actual link then, just so we can show it on the screen. Yeah. Uh, this one. So this is a post from 2021, dude. Three years. This girl, ago. thoughtful Bay. Shout out, Dee Dee. Um, shout out. Come shout out. Show. Come out. The, come on the show, really though. <laughs> um, she, so she goes in. She essentially like predicts like that. So Raven, fucking uh, time traveling, like some yeah, Simpsons premonition. Yeah. Like what is yeah. this? She straight up says the. I, the first, the first sentence is the album will be titled "The Death of Slim Shady." This is 2021. Like, first of all, how does this shit even happen? And it's crazy. I don't even know. But she says it'll be a farewell to a legendary persona. Just kind of what I was thinking. That's probably um, what it will be. <clears throat> which, Obviously. at this point, she might know everything. So let's take her word for it. 
She says, it won't be a retirement project. Instead, it'll shock fans by introducing a more laid-back lyricist that's more focused on what he says instead of how he's saying it, which is what we've all been asking for um, for the longest time now. But she says, it will pay homage to iconic moments in M's career with M writing a letter to Slim as a way of sharing how that persona impacted his life, both negatively and positively. That's definitely be, happening. I mean, I yeah. I mean, that'd be crazy, like a stand part too. We know no. there's going to be a song where he's talking to himself as Eminem and it's like I mean, it, going back and forth. Has to be. Yeah, yeah, because there's, I think there's even teasers of that song happening. Like, I don't know, but it's interesting. Like, I think that'd be a great concept for the album. Like, yeah, a whole you know a recap of slim shady in his career because he even says himself like the you know the term slim shady or the persona is kind of an encapsulation of like uh the fame kind of taking over his life and shit so it'd be interesting to see like his whole story you know what i'm saying from from the beginning to where he's at now and like uh like Didi said uh you know shout given his Didi. shout out Didi, given his input now after you know everything he's been through but yeah i'm excited you, i took the tweet off the screen here but there is instead it'll have production from the Alchemist, Ninth Wonder, Mad Lib, DJ Premier, Q Tip, Dre influence. So maybe she's right about all these things. We get it, Mad Lib production, Alchemist production, Premier production. Yeah. Also shout yeah. out DJ Premier. That new Nas song actually goes hard. Did you listen? Smacker. To that? I actually haven't listened to it yet, but I'm sleeping. It was good actually. There's a new DJ Premier Nas song that dropped <laughs> yeah. just like randomly yeah. on last Friday. I just think we missed it last week, but. I liked it actually. But now I'm his excited. Voice sounds exactly the same, by the way. It's um, crazy. And then after, I mean, he goes on and tweets this. Obviously, he pro- this is the first time Eminem's promoted an album in like a decade, basically. Yeah. So because he's um, he's been shock dropping them though. He tweeted he about like, it lately. Yeah, yeah. Because right. like he even said in an interview, that's why I I told you I didn't even think he would announce his album like that because he even said in an interview that he doesn't like to announce his album because people will write it off before it even drops um how do you feel about shock drop albums versus rollouts like the i guess J. it, dep- I, might I guess it depends yeah because like i think the death of slim shady is such a good and uh captivating title alone and yeah. um i think like if you do the rollout in a correct way it can be captivating and interesting and i don't know i feel like yeah I, general, I guess it depends what do you prefer I think I prefer rollouts because usually rollouts are for more conceptual, more thought out albums. You know what I'm saying? Like generally, I feel like if people are doing rollouts, it's an album they really care about. Um, yeah. The one that's like, coming to mind is the formats album, but that's a debut project. So it's kind of different circumstances. Yeah. But you know, we look at it like a, a fucking mightily later. Right. But yeah, no one knew I it was think, coming at all. Nobody knew it was coming, but will that be as good as a fall off? You know what I'm saying? Maybe not. That might still be a shock drop, but it's still anticipated in a sense. You know what I'm saying? So, yeah. I just I like know. personally, I feel like if I don't know an album's coming, I go into it with le- way less expectations. Yeah. But it, it may negatively affect sales because you're not pushing it, as, pushing it as much on all your socials. So maybe it sells less. But I yeah. think the reception to the album would be better if people aren't waiting six months for it. Yeah, definitely, because people already build up a thought in their mind of how the album should be in their mind. Um, I mean, it's it's Eminem, my true goat, and I'm going to have high expectations going into I mean, yeah, album. bro. Dude, yes. Come on now. Like, I so have the high. highest of expectations. This better be a great album. But you think we'll get clipped if we show the clip, actually? Yeah, I would, I would think so. Okay, because there, there's nothing too crazy, and it's just like, a thrown together little montage like from yeah it's just own. there's no there's no new it's just a little skit there. of um saying like uh eminem or marshall mathers or eminem killed some sl- slim shady essentially it's like some shady's dead this that and the other thing and then it's eminem doing an interview behind a, a blurred face and then he peeks out of it and then whatever but he could do so much like what if we do get stan part two featuring dido or we get a my name is part two or some could you imagine shit <laughs> Could you imagine? Shady, please lie down. Anything. Like, <laughs> lie down. There's so Stop. many options. Stop. Like, horrible. What do you? Are we getting like features? You think from like new school people, or like I is think it a it's, full shady? I think it's almost. I don't think it's confirmed that we're getting features, but I think it's almost almost confirmed. I think it's pretty much highly rumored that we are getting features. Um, 
from like his circle though or like new school famous i don't people? know that's the thing i feel like it'll be a mix um like we know we're gonna get royce we're gonna get probably joiner maybe logic like yeah. those guys i get but like are we getting little baby that's what i want well <laughs> little I baby little i don't baby. know but <laughs> that's who i want metro Boomin did tweet at eminem yeah, and I said we need to lock in dude and this this is what i've been saying Imagine. bro this is what i've been fucking hoping for bro this is we talked about this months ago when we said fucking Eminem was dropping an album. We said, what do we want it to be? We want it to be leaning more into the trap style than the rock and roll style. You know what I'm saying? Like, it needs it needs to be that. And Metro Boomin could really bring his style in and really produce a great album, I think, with Eminem. So that'd be fire. Um, but I don't know. In terms of features, like... I don't know. I really don't know. I think there's features that are likely and features that I want. I think some features that are likely are like, yeah, a Royce, a Joiner, um, yeah. Easy Mail. I just feel, like it, I just feel um, like it would be so sick to take like the GOAT, like objective GOAT from our generation of rap, late yeah. 90s, early 2000s when we grew up, and like throw a future, a little Baby, a Drake, yeah. all these people in it to get the new school kids on yeah. the Eminem album. Like, well, that's... NBA the, young boys on the Eminem album, kids are gonna listen to that shit. The guys that I mentioned, are, I think, are likely features. But yeah, like you said, like I feel like there's features that need to happen. For me personally, I need to see him and fucking J Cole on a song. Definitely, one hundred percent needs to happen. Just him and J culture. Cole needs to happen. Him and Kendrick again happened? needs to happen. Uh, I no, him and Cole never did a song together. Him and Kendrick or have. Ke- okay, yeah. um, what song does he have with Kendrick? I do vaguely remember. Um, fuck, I forget what it's feature. called. It, Kendrick's a feature on an Eminem song, right? It's yeah. not like Eminem it's on, P2. Yep. Yeah, I don't remember. But it's like a more poppy bullshit. Love game. Okay. They Which I haven't like listened to in a long time. From so. Kendrick and Eminem, though. I, I mean, it's like, probably a really good song, but we, I just haven't re-listened to it in a long time. I'm not going to speak on the quality of that song, but... Um, yeah, I mean, those are just some some features I would really like. Obviously, Future would be great. Um, and Metro Metro Production, um, I guess going into, like, producers I want on it. I want Metro on there for sure. I want Conductor Williams on there for sure. I want Alchemist on there for sure. Um, yeah, those are those are the, the guys I want. You didn't even say Dre. So. Forget Dre right now. Is that a pun? Forget about Dre. Forgot about Dre. <laughs> I forgot about Dre. <laughs> exactly. Mm-hmm. But yeah, yeah, we are getting a new Eminem. We talked. Yeah, we talked about last <clears throat> like a month ago when Dre said something. Yeah, we talked about it a while ago. Yeah. But it's officially coming this year. It's already April, so in the next in like, the summer six months. Yeah, I was gonna say it's probably coming soon. Actually. Yeah, it said in the summer. I don't think we even said that, but yeah. I'll be. Eh, it's going on the tier list. Then it's coming this year. I'm excited. Hell to yeah, bro! That. I'm excited, bro. <laughs> That and that's the thing. That's review. the thing about rollouts is I already have an image in my mind of how I think it should be, but exactly, which could be detrimental. I which feel could like. be bad. <laughs> like me and you are lifelong Eminem fans, and we're yeah, now like you know, we hold him albums. to such a we hold him to we're such a listen. high standard. You know, what I mean, like I, we know what he's capable of, and yeah, uh, come on now. But even if it's That's not what we say. expect, we're going to give it the time of day and listen to it and try to appreciate it, even if it's not I mean, what we expect. 100%. A lot of people it. aren't, though. The kids stop on Twitter it. are not going to do that. I mean, I mean, like, it was like, gonna... I mean he's my goat, straight up. He, I mean, if if we're talking about who one artist I've listened to the most in my life, it's Eminem. By 100%. far, bro. So he much. has probably By not so close. Much. I mean, all yeah. my childhood. It's crazy. Okay. Like while we're while we're on it, then let's name top three. Who are the top three artists, hours wise, that you've listened hours, to in your life? Oh, hours that's listened. Tough. I mean, well, number one is Eminem for sure. Same for me. I want to know um, your two and three, basically, because it's obviously yeah, Eminem. yeah. Number one is Eminem. Uh, for sure, for sure, Eminem one. Um, number two, I think, I think Drake probably, or Lil Wayne maybe might be my. Number I think two. number two was probably Wayne. Number two is probably Wayne just because he's been out for so long. And, and number put, three, dude, this number three spot is really hard for me because those are my two, like, goats who I think are the greatest of all time. And I have Nas at number three right there. But I haven't, I don't, I, like, I haven't listened to Nas that much. Yeah, like, like for weeks and weeks and weeks on end for years. And, yeah. I feel like just for the amount of, sh- like, radio shit, it's probably Drake, but... 
I feel um, like Tyler's up there for me. Tyler is probably up there, dude. The, the that the army, the Pharaoh shit. <sighs> True. If we're I, I mean, I was I was all yeah. over that. I mean, Earl. Do people listening know who that is? Maybe if they're, they're really so deep in hip hop, it's disgusting. Oh, dude, one of the greatest Still. rap groups of all time, hundred percent. Jedi Mind um, Tricks is the greatest rap group of all time. I'd say probably behind Wu Tang, but yeah, I mean they're up there for sure. But I mean at MWA, I mean there's a lot of great ones, but um, yeah, I don't know. But those are, those are those really are few of the so guys. many amazing albums, right? Yeah, but, like how many good Jedi Mind Trick songs do you know? Like so many, so many. Yeah, dude, like. <laughs> And then there's Army yeah. of the Pharaohs, which is like another six albums full. Which is, they all have solos. Like if it's I had crazy. three, if I had three top artists, they're probably number three low key because all through how high school I was just bumping that shit. We need to get back on our Jedi Mind Tricks wave. Like, Yo, real shit. It's, I, it's I was listening to that the other day, bro, and that shit is that shit is crazy, dude. Yeah, but that's like it's also like that horrorcore, dark, fucked up, crazy shit. Like well, some, just, I mean, sometimes, yeah. But, yeah, like Vinny though, like he's always, but like if you just want real raw hip hop, like oh yeah, Jedi Mind right Tricks there. is where you go. Yeah, like, definitely, man. But that that third spot man. is hard for me. But how about you? I I do I think it's probably Eminem, Lil Wayne, or Drake, and Tyler. Like Tyler. most hours listened in my life. Yeah, because yeah. back in the day, Odd Future was just like everything. I mean, yeah, it just ruled our yeah ruled our childhood really. I mean, I. Yeah, I have the word radical, you know? Right. We listen to a lot of Tyler. That's literally off of... I think that song's on Bastard, if I'm remembering correctly. All right, well, speaking of Bastards, let's get into this Kanye interview. This fucking guy, man. (laughs) Kanye is a psychopath, dude. I mean, we knew Uh, it wasn't last long. (laughs) I mean, we bend on that, but yeah, yeah. We knew... He's back. we We were surprised last week, or whatever, two weeks ago, when we didn't talk about him at all. We knew he'd be back. Yeah. So yeah, he went on the download, as we mentioned in the intro, and it was like a full hour interview, and so many clips got posted all over Twitter. Like, Kanye was yeah. just saying the most unhinged shit. Just saying we're everything. Gonna, we're going to go over a few of the main things that he said and give our opinions on it, so I guess we'll just go right down the line. Let me know what you yeah. think of this one. This even come about who? How did this even come oh, about? Fuck. Who called who? Oh... Uh... Yeah, Pluto. Pluto wow. called me. I went to the studio late that day. Wow, he didn't even say nothing yet, dude. You know, wait, 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 wait. The, you know, the creative process, adding the chords and call the hooligans, called them out in London to get on a joint. And, you know, everybody was very, very excited about the elimination of Drake. Yo. We were not excited, we was energized. <laughs> No, I can't kidding. even hear that without like laughing, bro. That shit is it's so, so funny. cringy, bro. The elimination, that is so of Drake, cringy. bro. What are you talking about? Oh my god! So on an interview, <laughs> so funny. the guy asks, "Yo, Kanye, oh, how did this shit. like that remix even come about? Like, who hit up who? Did Pluto reach out to you? Pluto is future. Did they reach out to you to do the remix? Did you hit them up? Like, hey, I got a verse. Let me do that. Right. And Kanye's like, well." Pluto hit me up. We got together, and we were all just so excited about the elimination of that's Drake. That's what I'm saying. Like, what are you it's even so talking cringy, about, dude. bro? Like, like that's what are you talking about? Shit. That is like, are funny. they? It just makes me think that this is all the, just them being like jealous of Drake for dominating for so long. Like, that's how it sounds when Kanye bro. says shit like that. Like, is it like not, it, it seems not even real at this point, dude? It it's seems so not even wack. real. How can you like, hear people say this and then not be on Drake's side? Like you're like, dude, fuck that is kind of true, dude. I'm like, Loki, dude, Drake like... needs to win. <laughs> like this is Yo, whack. It is kind of true. That is kind of true. But I mean, here we are, Drake. It's twenty v one. Like I just like <clears throat> everyone in on Twitter and like social media the last month since like that dropped has kind of felt this way. That like. This is like everyone just coming at Drake. It kind of seems like a weird vibe. And then Kanye straight weird. up says, yeah, bro, we're all excited to take About the Drake. elimination of Drake, dude. That's like a hilarious thing to say. That's awesome. I really do love it. And shout but... out to Kanye for just being straight up. Like, Metro will come out here. Metro Metro will come out here and be like, been in it, been in it, been in it. Future will come out here and be like, yeah, you a fed, sleeping with, you know, pillow talking, acting like a fed. Fucking Kendrick will be out here like for all the dogs, fuck that. Kanye comes out here like the elimination of Drake. <laughs> what the fuck? That's crazy. That's so great. All right, let's. Uh, awesome. We got more. Don't worry. There's more clips. So 
Look at his grill, though. It looks so bad in person. I just feel like it's not cool. Like, when Straight we first saw Canadian. it leaked, I thought it was cool. But now I don't think it's cool anymore. I don't think it's cool anymore. Now, that's the whole thing for these, all the celebrities to really be able to capitalize off of their audience. Or is it a bunch of middlemen controlling the market? Wow. 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 Middlemen saying wow. this is what diamonds cost. Wow. And everybody running around. Is that like, real audio? Every That's why oh, yeah. every bar that Drake said <laughs> that means is not nothing mathing. anymore on a drop and game. Anybody can drop and do shit. <laughs> Your raps don't mean shit, nigga. It nothing doesn't mean because the shit is artificial. Lucy and Drake, all the shit is artificial. Wow. You know what I'm saying? That's why wow. gods had to come. It's like, pack that boy up. Pack that boy you know, up. So, wow. That, 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 that's, that's what everybody on. That's what everybody on. That's what everybody on. Sent. So he's basically saying, like, Drake's push-up diss is whack. It doesn't even matter what he says because it's all, like, an agenda Artificial. made up by corporate America. He didn't even write it. Yeah, that's basically, like, he has ghostwriters, none of it's real, whatever. Which I just think is funny. Like, bro, you're like that remix lyrically compared to push-ups is so trash. I mean, that is true. Even, even if it is true, a whole group of 50 dudes wrote it. If you're the greatest of all time, which you claim you are constantly... You should be able to out rap 50 dudes at once. I don't care. Well, like, you know what I'm saying? I Honestly, while we're on the topic, I'm, like, over the whole ghostwriting thing. Like, everyone has writers. That's not a Yeah, I mean, concept. I feel like it's different. I don't know. I feel like it's different coming from Kanye's mouth because I feel like he thinks about it more conspiratorially. You know what I mean? Like, he thinks more deeper. Like you said, it's, like, more corporate America. It's not just, like, his homie that's writing for him, like, is the case for a lot of people. But it's more like corporate America kind of setting Drake up. Yeah, because but like if me and you were in a studio making a song, and I was the rapper, okay? I'm a rapper, <clears> you're <throat> just my friend, chilling, smoking weed in the studio, hanging out. And I'm right, and I'm like, yo, bro, what rhymes with pasta? And you like give me a bar. Like you now get a writing credit on the song. Yeah, sure. Like that's but how that's different works. than, well, but that's different than what Kanye is claiming that. Yeah. You know, 50 dudes sit in a room and fucking write up lines for Drake. I mean, that I would be weird, right? I don't think it's right? that deep. But like, if it I is, just... that would be weird, right? Yeah, sure. If Ka- if Drake didn't write push-ups at all and he just got handed it. And <laughs> if there was 50 it. dudes in a room, right, writing writing the whole fucking song word for word, yeah, for him, yeah. It'd be crazy. I just don't think that's the case. I mean, sure. I don't necessarily think that's the case either. But, you know, a lot of people, I feel like a lot of people do think that. Uh, yeah, yeah. They they do, especially for Drake specifically, because especially that's for Drake always been like a thing. Yeah. I mean, Drake has real, I feel like so obviously people been. that know rap know that. I mean, Drake can spit. Drake's always been a spitter, but if not, they know now. <coughs> right. right. Um, this next Kanye clip that we have from the interview is maybe the most outlandish one. It's just like he. This is him calling out J Cole by name. Okay. Oh yeah, this dude. One, yeah. Come on. So now. this this one is just. It's kind of just mean spirited, honestly. But. Bro, Kanye's just a dickhead at this point. Yeah. <laughs> J. Cole apologized to Kendrick. Fuck all that pussy shit. Oh, shit. Fuck all that shit. Yeah, you have it. Yo, fuck all that shit, man. Because it's like that nigga J. Cole went on tour Drake. He know what it is. It's like, nigga, you can't run now. It's you also. All this like. It's up for, it's up for Cole, too? If you say Cole, you can't say up and Cole in the same sentence. Oh, it's like, it's we want to get back into this, Kanye. Are like, apologies even allowed in rap beef, though? I don't know. I've man. never seen no shit like I that just, before. I don't. I don't listen to J Cole, so I wouldn't even know. I just heard he had a song called False Idols. Right. Told me, somebody told me it's halfway about me, right. so it's like that. You know. Wow. There you got it, man. Yeah. Okay, so if y'all are confused, last if you were here last week. Last week, clips came out of this podcast, but the full podcast didn't release. And we actually yeah. talked about one of these clips where Kanye says Dre, uh, J. Cole uh, is boring, essentially, and gets uh, uh, pussy, dry. pussy dry, I guess. <laughs> yeah. Um, he uh, says that in the Like That remix. So, yeah. Now Play the J. Full... Cole, get the pussy dry. It's the lyric. Oh, the that's, where, that's where it came from. Yeah. So, he yeah. says that. And last week, we were like, what the fuck? Why are you coming at him? That's what it was. I, I'm confused. My bad. But. So yeah, but no, at week, that, you're right. At that time, we didn't have the full interview. We just had like a two minute clip. Where I think he played I the thought song. clips had come out, but yeah, yeah, right, 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 exactly. Um, so then this week, full interview comes out, and he's like, "Yeah, fuck J Cole, uh, he's a pussy essentially." 
So, yeah. I mean, we talked about this last week, but I don't know. We can go into it again. But, like, Kanye will get ripped by J. Cole in 2024. Yeah. I mean, he's not touching him. It would take every ounce of talent that Kanye has left in his little yeah. pathetic body to <laughs> stop. pull the torch like, to J. Cole's writing ability. I feel like it really would take every ounce of talent. Like, it yeah, really would. Like, I don't, Kanye's I know, production I feel like, is next level. We all know that. But spit sure, it. Sure. You can, sure. I, you're, not, Cole, but bro. you're not going to out you know rap somebody on the beat with a beat or with exactly. you know with heavy 808s you know what i'm saying like it's not gonna you're not just you're not gonna do it like that and i don't know if y'all listen to might delete later but if you compare it to fucking vultures one which i'm sure you listen to i mean come on now it's not it's really not close the thing is vultures one listening to it or really any kanye album just in general Maybe yeah. more fun and enjoyable to listen to than a J. Cole sure. album. I have more That's replay and value. That's not but the point a, of the but argument. But in a diss, in like yeah. a rap in a battle, rap battle and it's bars, not close. Yeah, dude. Nothing. Yeah. It's not close, bro. Stop it. Do you I think mean, Cole I, comes back into the beef to respond I to Kanye? I hope so, after man. This, this is what we need, bro. And this is what I was saying last week. Like, I'm so excited because Kanye is straight up dragging J. Cole back into it. And I J. Hate. Cole, this, is, this might be what he needs to just. I mean, he kind of is a layup for J. Cole. Let's be honest. Like, Especially now. Is, come on now. Come on He's now. the most canceled man of all time. This is what Literally. I'm saying. All the dirt that that everybody's got on, on Kanye. Like, for the past, like, two years, there's just been straight headlines about how shitty Kanye is. I mean, you can Literally. make a whole fucking uh, uh, a novel about this motherfucker. You know what I'm saying? And we got like, all shit. the Pete Davidson shit, all the Kim shit, all his kids. Yeah, like, I mean, you got mad stuff. ammo, there's bro. There's literally everything. So you got much. ammo. Ammo. So, I mean, I don't know. I like. I, I, said it? It, I said it before. I said it again. J. Cole sweeps Kanye in a rap battle. Does he do it? That's a different question. I don't know. I fucking hope so, bro. There's been too much fucking J. Cole slander on my Twitter timeline. This is bullshit, bro. Y'all can't he be slandering my man himself, J. Cole bro. like this, bro. Yeah, he did, but I also said the week it came out, if anybody came at J. Cole in a serious way, they would catch the smoke if J. Cole wanted to do it. So I need J. Cole to make me look good and, you know, come out here and smoke this motherfucker, bro. Smoke this Nazi, bro. Get this Nazi out of here. I just feel like J. Cole putting out the Kendrick diss in response to like that on a surprise project, then removing it and apologizing in this whole thing we went through. <laughs> That's one thing. Kendrick's your yeah. boy. We get That's it. One thing. You're barely involved. But Kanye straight up went on a podcast and Dude, called you this a is pussy by name. Bro. This is you what gotta, I'm saying. You got to come is, back. This is what I'm saying. And I said this last week. I said last week, um, if, you know, like like you just said, like that's one thing. But if he doesn't come back now, like, then what? I don't know. I still, I still got res- my full respect for him now. Nothing changed after apologizing to Kendrick. But if he don't come now... I don't know. Because I feel like I would lose some respect for him if he doesn't come back now. Right. Especially after you, false prophets. How you exactly how are you gonna shoot at how are you gonna shoot at Kendrick after Kendrick did barely even said anything to you, didn't name drop you at all. And yeah. then Kanye goes in an interview and essentially says you're a, J. Cole is a pussy, essentially is what he said. And Basically. not say shit to, to to Kanye and write some shit to, to Kendrick? Like, come on now. Oh man, maybe we get sense. something. It we might, we might. I hope so. so. That's what I'm hoping for. Get Cole back in here, get him spitting. Because seven minutes Bro. was good. Cole is the best rapper out of all of these all motherfuckers. Of, of yeah. all of them, bro. Let's Basically. be honest. It, yeah, like you can literally argue that Cole is the number one rapper out of everyone involved in this. I, I think he is hundred percent. And I think in terms of like battling, in terms of like battle rap style rapping, he's the favorite if he wants if he if he goes all out like that he's like an avatar he's like an ang you know what i'm saying he's an this avatar is- ang bro like he he could end the world he could fucking save the world but he don't want to kill he don't want to kill the guy at the top you know what i'm saying he he just don't want to do it he don't want to let his gun go you know in like avatar lore how they can like reach and speak to the previous <clears throat> yeah. avatars of times past and like yeah. ask them for help like who would cole call on for help it's got i mean it's got to be nas right nas or big l but nas is alive you can't let nas down twice though i mean i guess it doesn't matter if they're alive but yeah yeah, i guess they do have to die for in avatar's sake you know for avatar's sake the metaphor alive 
Um, you know, it's got it's got like it's got to be Biggie. Nah, it's got to be Biggie. Probably, yeah. I mean, or Big L though. <laughs> if J Cole, if J <laughs> Cole somehow like gets word from somebody, you know, a dead goat. I mean, I feel like Biggie. Okay. I'll, or Big I'll L. I mean, I you know, Big, Big L, you can't go wrong. I, you, I'm not gonna pick between one of the two, bro. All right. I just felt like, like in a battle rap, you might want Big L's energy. That's true, because he's got like more punchline. He's the punchline king, bro. Come yeah, on, exactly. Like, man, I wish Big L lived long enough, man. Dude, we would. It just bumps me out every time I think about it. Like Stop. all the Big L albums. It makes we me never sad. Got. It really does. It really does, dude. Okay. Well, this <laughs> the next Kanye clip we have is actually him calling out someone else, but they're not a rapper at all. They're not <laughs> Sweet, involved. dude. Okay, cool. <laughs> He's just sending <laughs> shots at everybody. Like, but bro, it is, what are you doing? it's not someone that he hasn't sent shots at before. Right, he's not, We've it's talked not completely about beef. Ir- out of nowhere, yeah. right. We've talked about Kanye and this person before, and Kanye's mm-hmm. back talking his shit, and it's just like, really, bro? Like, did you not watch what happened when you sent this dude huge pants? Like, you're wild. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, these pants were fucking 10 sizes too big, bro. On the wrong side of the future. Wow. If you posting something negative, you're just on the wrong side of the future. What does that even mean? You know, we we out here stepping away from Adidas, like the shit that Kai sent to my. That's some industry plan Bro. shit. He yeah, gonna yeah. he gonna be talking yeah, shit about it. my pants. That's so so he's then, an industry plan. He's it, an of course, he's the opposite. Plan. Totally, the fucking that exact genre is the most industry plan. It's about like okay, influence and mind control. And then he gonna mention my daughter's name a week later. It's like nigga, that, don't mention. My daughter's name, and then you you dissing what's paying a two hundred thousand dollar a month child support. Wow, that's the first of all. That's one thing. I mean, what? whatever. That's one argument. But, bro, what is this Nazi fucking jerk? He is straight up a Nazi, bro. We're not even allowed to have a criticism yeah. about anything without being an industry plant. Like, come on now, we ain't even allowed to criticize shit without being like. And then the dude next to him's like, "Oh, so he's an industry plant." Wait, did you watch the clip, bro? This fucking pants, bro. It went up yeah. to his neck, dude. Like, come on, bro. What are we talking about? We ain't allowed I feel to... Like and this is the what fact starts, that this started over those pants is hilarious. How are we... Bro, you want to think like you're so deep in conspiratorial... Bro, you are the... You are the not... You are the guy you say you don't want to be... Like, anybody says one word, it's like... Oh, you're an industry... What do you mean we're allowed to criticize shit that is... A human nature to fuck his straight credit. Like, come on now. I don't know. It's the just, fact that Kanye said, if you say He's anything negative that. about anything that I do, <laughs> you're on the wrong I'm side saying, of history. Bro. It's some dictator type shit. Dude, that was a crazy quote. What exactly did he say? I forget what he exactly said, but I'm like, bro, what are you talking about? Uh, he just said, if you on? say anything negative, you're on the wrong side. Negative about what? Anything? And you just can't be negative. That's at all what I mean. It. I'm like, that's what I'm saying. We're not allowed to criticize anything at all anymore without yeah. being industry plants. According to Kanye, yeah, Kai is an industry plant. Be- and if you don't, if you have, if you're new here and you didn't listen a few weeks ago, Kai Sinat got sent a pair of whatever the yeah, Yeezy bro. pants from Yeezy.com, and he bro. tries them on on stream, and you could literally fit four Kai Sinats in bro, these. They pair were of pants. fucking eight sizes too big, bro. It wasn't even close. I mean, come like, on, now. like cartoon shit. Not like it's yeah, a little dude. loose. Like it was yeah, crazy. No. Like to his neck. Like I was saying, like straight cartoon shit. But and Kai wasn't even being like a dick and talking shit. He was literally just like joking around about it on streaming. Yeah, Kanye like DM'd him and took it super seriously and said, crazy. "You were paid." by adidas to bash my pants like bro, it's crazy watch the clip. bro put them it on, they don't fit. I, for the record i still haven't got a shipping email on my yeezy pod <laughs> right he's what too did busy I building you? cages and shit for children i have seen a lot of people are commenting oh my shit shipped i got a i've seen email. that too yeah i ain't got shit okay? i was wondering yeah but... what, what when i bought them what did i say the over under was three months we're pushing I think something it. like that we're pushing it. We're getting there. I ordered one pair of Yeezy Pods for 20 bucks three months ago. Still nothing. So Kanye is a fucking industry plan of anything, <laughs> stealing my money. But it's crazy. We did get a response, though, from Kai. He already reacted and talked about he, this. And so he released a that. diss track. <laughs> that would be fire. Do you imagine? Dude. I feel like he could probably spit a little. He hangs out with enough rappers and shit. Probably. Does he ever do music, Kai? Is he like a music guy? Does he have songs and shit? Maybe. I don't know. I just feel like his his like channel like 
is so always like a lot so of like YouTubers have adjacent. like parody yeah. songs and shit like that. So maybe that's why I figured he might. But this clip is Kai Sinet reacting to Kanye calling him an industry plant. It's not the best screen. This is this is what we got out here stepping away from Adidas, like the shit that Kai sent to my. That's some industry plant. Shit. What the fuck is Kai sent? <laughs> Bro, what the fuck is Kai sent, nigga? Yeah, he gonna yeah. he gonna be talking yeah, shit about it. my pants. That's so so he's an industry plant. He's an of course, he's the opposite. Total like, fucking that exact genre is the most industry plants. It's about like influence and mind control. And then he gonna mention my daughter's name a week later. It's like nigga, that, don't mention. I look so confused. My daughter's name, and then you you dissing. He literally didn't do it. Paying eight hundred thousand dollars so child support. Wow, the, the billionaire oh, child support is different. Yeah, but it's like don't mention this and then mention my daughter's name. It's like it be that kind. of... Okay, buddy. First things first. <laughs> Yay. <laughs> Yay, I've been doing this shit since 2018, gang. Facebook, me, Bronx, funny skits. What's been that doing this ago? shit, Jay. <laughs> you feel me? All because a lot of people, all because a lot. Man, fuck that. The pants ain't fit. <laughs> <laughs> right, though. <laughs> Yo. Bro, yay, just send me some new pants, bro. Bro, just send bro. me bro, all of this because my pants ain't fit. Nigga, that ain't even fit. That ain't even fit. Damn, with the cannon. <laughs> with the cannon. Gang, just send me some new pants, bro. Like, no cap. We don't even got to be do Like, you feel me, bro? I'm as I'm far from an industry plant. Feel me? I done got this shit out the mud. Do people got to do some yeah. research. So, basically, if it wasn't obvious, Kai's not an industry plant. He's just a guy who bought pants I that mean, didn't fit. But, like, how does, why does Kanye grab onto this and, like, run with it? Like, Kai's an industry plant because his pants didn't fit? Like, it's just so crazy. Why? I don't know, man. I don't know if it's for clicks at this point. I don't know if his persona is, like, made up anymore. I don't know what's real, what's not. Like, you know, yeah. what really like, made I'll me just think, out, think out Kai because he's popular. The the Ryan Garcia fight last week, like, the whole, like, few last weeks, Ryan Garcia was, like, acting crazy as hell, like. And then he comes out and he just whoops fucking Devin Haney's ass. And after he's just completely normal. Like, I, I really wonder if this whole thing from Kanye is just a whole game to him. Like, I don't I know. Mean, it, it's, it, I don't it's know. Because like, I don't know what goes to your mind to even say some shit like that. You know what I mean? It's like, I just don't get like how if you're Kanye West, right? You have a company, Yeezy. It's a billion dollar company. It literally brought Bro. Adidas out of the grave. And you send someone a famous, the biggest streamer in the world, like bro. literally, a pair of pants, and he tries them on, they don't fit. He doesn't even talk to you, he just jokes around, and now you're, like, more, like, you're dragging it on for months and months and months. Like, it's just, like, let it go, bro. It's $20 it's pair weird. of pants. It's weird. Kai, I feel like Kai's got a crazy life, bro. Yeah. Like, how is he in the middle of this? Drake's calling him out in the push-ups. Right. Song, <laughs> that right? is true. That is kind of true. Like, yeah. Streamers are really out here, and shout out Kai for really paving the way. Yeah, it's like, unfortunately, it's him and Aiden really in the hip hop world. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, sure, yeah. I just thought. I mean, unfortunately weird. for Aiden, I mean Kai is cool. Yeah, Kai's never, unfortunately, you know, Aiden. Kai's never done no weird, real disrespectful shit. Aiden's just a little, little gremlin. Yeah, little I mean, demon. I like Kai. He's cool. <laughs> like I'm, I have no problem with Kai at all. It's just all like right. I, have, I'm starting to have a problem with Kanye at this point. I mean, right, dude. I've been had a, Kanye, I've been Kanye? had a problem with Kanye, but yeah, I've been like, had a problem with Kanye, right? But I mean, look, it is what it is at this point. Well, he's, we do. He have might one be more. manically. Not he's there. fucked. He's yeah. fucked in that. Something's wrong with Kanye. If you didn't know, we do have one more clip though from this Kanye interview. Nothing dramatic, but if you remember a few weeks ago. We had a screenshot of a tweet, or no, a DM on Instagram that Kanye, he DM'd a Baby Keem fan page. <laughs> yeah, dude. And said, Vultures is dropping May 3rd, basically. The <clears throat> fan page DM yeah. Kanye, like, hey, when's Vultures dropping? He's like, yo, trying to get this out May 3rd. And it's just like some random meme account. Like, Yeah, like, he thought it was Baby Keem. It was yeah, a fan page. thought it was the real Baby Keem. So, it turns out, a month or two later, however long it's been, that was real, 100%. That is the real release date of Vultures 2. It's coming on May 3rd. He announced it on there, which is, what, seven days from today in a week, next Friday? Apparently, we're getting Vultures 2. Yeah. 
So this is the little clip of him announcing it. Vultures 2. Is Vultures mm. 2 coming out? When is it coming out? It's coming out May 3rd. May 3rd for yeah. sure. Stamp. Doesn't even yeah. look at the yeah, camera. Have it. Watch this. Watch when he says May 3rd. Vultures 2. Is Vultures mm. 2 coming out? When is it coming Doesn't, out? Can't even coming look out at the 3rd. camera. Like, this looks motherfucker away. is lying, dude. <laughs> he, can't he, lying. he can't even yet. He can't even... <laughs> Can't even look you in his eye, in the eyes yeah. when he says it, bro. There's no fucking way in hell that this album is dropping this week. That's funny. Do you think I mean, it does? Ho- hopefully, but we'll see. What do you think? What are you expecting in Vultures too? Like a, Not a as completely good as different vibe. Is what I'm expecting. Worse than but Vultures. We'll see. Want. I mean, I'm hearing that he he just goes solo album, which then it might be better. Wait, what? Um, yeah. That Ty's not on it. I've that's I've heard rumors. Yeah. But I don't know but how true that is. In the Like That mm-hmm. remix, I thought Ty Dolla Sign was saying Vultures 2 and 3, like, calling it out. In the I know, universe. it's interesting. Trust me, I know. You can't ever fucking... You can't ever predict anything with this guy. So, like, you never know, right? So, um, I don't know. But it would be interesting. I don't know what to expect, to be honest. I don't... I really don't know. Because I feel like it's going to be kind of similar vibe-wise. Like, there's going to be some really good songs and, like, some throwaway shit. And it's just, like, yeah. kind of I mean, a mess. You, you have some leaks. I try not to listen to the leaks, but yeah, I don't know. I, I feel like those might not even be on there. Like, the River song with Thug and Everybody with Little Baby. If like, maybe they just out, got rid right? of them. Yeah. Because if you're listening and you like the uh, album reviews and the ranking of all the albums, next week we should have Vultures 2. And the new Four Bats project next week. We got two good albums dropping next week, so yep. make sure you're here next week for that, because that'll be dope if they both actually drop. Hell yeah. Okay, so we talked about Eminem. Oh, we did. Also, while we're on the topic, the Like That remix that Kanye put out on his YouTube, because basically when this interview came out, he like made a tweet and it was like, more dropping tonight, and then just posted like Yeezy.com. No yeah. one knew what it was. We all just assumed, okay, Kanye's trying to sell us more merch. But he actually released the Like That remix on his YouTube with a new future verse, the remix production, all that. There was like, it was like good, full quality, mix and mastered on YouTube. Gets removed from Sony right away. He yep. did not have permission to post it. No. Nope. I mean, I don't know. How does that <laughs> what happen? to say? How because Lucian, happen? Lucian, that's exactly how it happened. It's Drake. Drake's behind it, but what if I he mean, is? What if Drake got that shit taken down? Might That's be. It's not Who impossible. Knows? I mean, I've but I've seen a lot of tweets after. Now it's like, um, I don't even know, man, because uh, I don't know. Because then he puts it back up, and then it gets taken back down again. So I mean, it yeah. exists, but I don't think it'll ever like be released on DS. No, it'll never be on streaming. But like, I mean, I, I, was... I wanted it to be though, because it was a good. It's a good, good remix. remix. I thought. Yeah, for like what it is, it's fine. It's just not like a great diss track. It's a good remix. But like no, I, I mean, was at not. I was at my mom's last week when it dropped. I didn't have my computer with me. And I saw it go live on YouTube. I'm like, grab my sister's computer, go to YouTube to MB3, put that link in, download the MP3. All right, I got the full mixed right. mastered version because this shit is not going to be up for long. And yeah. 12 hours later, yank. It's gone. Just yeah. gone. So I'm glad I did it. I mean, other people would have had the MP3, worst case scenario, but it's just like, dude, you're Kanye West. You can't get approval for a song or just like, like, what is yeah. up with these people? Well, that's not the only song that was taken down this week. Yeah, I, I was going to say, that's a perfect yeah. segue to hop into the Taylor Made Freestyle by Drake, also getting removed. That was never on streaming. Drake, if you, as you know, Drake released Taylor Made Freestyle on his Instagram last yeah. week that's how he put it out because it had the ai tupac ai snoop dog obviously you can't put that on streaming unless you no. get there's going to be so much red tape to do that but tell us what happened well um obviously tupac's estate wasn't happy with it they're not standing with they're on kendrick's side apparently mm-hmm. because they sent a de- cease and desist to drake and yeah. shortly after drake deleted all of the shit on his on his socials about it like you know the yeah. actual song and shit because he had posted it on Twitter and on Instagram just as an audio file. Yeah. Uh, so he deleted it there on both places and we haven't heard anything since from him. Um, yeah, and that's really it. I just feel like 
if you're Drake, if I'm Drake in this situation and I'm beefing with Kendrick Lamar, considered the greatest rapper of a generation, maybe of all time, and I've been waiting 10 years to beef with him, <laughs> in Drake's own words to academics, yeah. he's been waiting for this moment, and you get served a cease and desist, I'm paying the fines. I'm going to court. This song's staying up. <laughs> right. Yeah, but Wait. I don't know. I don't I don't think Drake wanted it. Even yeah. he, he got his point He doesn't across. want to disrespect you know Tupac either. Yeah, he don't need to, like, take the family to court and shit. He got his point across. I guess that is fair. But, like, I was kind of... I mean, yeah, because it basically when it happened, they were like, Drake has 24 hours to remove this from the internet, basically, or you're going to get sued. And then within 24 hours, it was gone. So, yeah. like, it, it's officially gone. But it obviously, it exists. You can't take it away from the internet. Like, nah, the I mean, Tupac it AI is out there forever. Yeah, and Kendrick, I'm sure, has heard about it. So, that's all that oh, really yeah. matters. What day are we on now with no Kendrick response? Since Who knows, man? I believe we're on day 13. I don't know, and I don't know, man. I don't. We were saying this about Drake when he didn't drop, but now it's like, what is Kendrick doing, bro? Kendrick started it. That's I, that's what I'm saying. That's that's where my mind differs. Like, if Drake started it, Kendrick has unlimited time. You can wait six months if you really want to. But like, yeah. when you start it and then you get a response and then you get two responses, right? We need a Kendrick track, bro. Yeah, we need a Kendrick this ASAP for sure. Do you think we have one by next week? Um, how long can he wait? Yeah, I don't know. I don't know how long to wait. Like, he could be using it for the album rollout, like we talked about last week or a couple weeks ago. I don't like it. I don't like nah, that. Man. I don't like it either, bro. Like, release on, the track. You're on hip hop Twitter. You see these things. Kendrick fans are coping hard, bro, on oh, yeah. the internet. Like, and I like Kendrick. I If I had to take a side in this beef, I'm on Drake's side because it's been fucking weird and Drake's just been playing really well so far. But, like, Kendrick, like, diehard fans who don't like Drake are, like, anything Kendrick does, they just, like, slob on his knob about, like, <laughs> Kendrick doesn't have to drop. His silence is doing more to Drake than Drake's diss did to Kendrick. Like, bro, that's... No, yeah, you can't I mean do it's that. Cap, obviously, Kendrick like, started this, dude. You yeah, no, nah, I mean we're here to hear raps, bro. We're not here to for all that. Come on now. So yeah, I think we're day thirteen or fourteen with no Kendrick diss. Maybe we get one this week. We'll keep you posted. If one drops, we'll probably hop on here and shoot a reaction and get it out <laughs> right yeah. away. So Hell yeah, we're still waiting though. As of Friday night, no response. Man, not yet. Does Drake does Drake drop a third one? I hope so. Is that possible, do you think? I don't know. The more music, the better, though, to be honest. I think at this point, For sure. he probably going to let it rest. Do you think? Yeah. The Tupac thing hit hard enough? I feel like it had to have. He's, I mean, at, what can you do? What more can you do to try to poke the bear? Like, to get him out to, you know what I'm saying? Like, to respond. Yeah. Because Drake has said, and basically in both disses so far, that he has another diss ready in the chamber. Like, right. ready to go. It's so like, I what think... more can you do? If it's that good and he thinks it's that strong of a diss that it's going to bring the coward out of Kendrick, like, he has right. no choice but to just wait for Kendrick to respond. I don't know. Like, you kind of just have to, he's just stuck in limbo. Or is right, Kendrick and they, they're both purpose? saying they have the red button or whatever, but, like, I don't know. Now, I mean, now the pressure's on Kendrick, so I guess <sighs> we'll see, man. Does does Kendrick drop his drop the nuke or does he drop something light and then drop the nuke later? Like, what happens? I don't know. Yeah, like he does a little something light so he can get Drake's next track to see how damaging it really is. Right. Before. I just... Okay. Tell me this. Is there any way on in any universe that okay. whatever Kendrick does to Drake is more damaging than what Pusha T did to Drake? It's not possible, right? I, I feel like it's not possible to do more damage. That's why I, I think Drake's not, right? so cocky and confident in here. He's like... My yeah, I mean, what out more there, can dog? you really do to Drake, right? You exposed a secret kid. Like that's, that's the it. thing about Drake, and everybody says it, but like that's that really is the thing is no matter what you say, like he's still gonna he's still gonna sell, and he's, he's still gonna going be away. here. No, he's gonna just be here doing his shit. Because, yeah, I guess like the one thing is like the girl shit, like Millie Bobby Brown, and apparently Billie Eilish was one of them as well that he was texting Billie Eilish when she was young. But they are like celebrities, so like it's. We don't have the context. There is that video of him kissing the girl on stage, which is the most damning piece of evidence, I think, against Drake and the whole... I don't think I've like, seen it. Young... You haven't seen it? 
it's from like probably oh nine like 2010 but basically drake's on stage performing a show like it's like 2000 people it's not an arena type shit and he has a girl on stage he's like how old are you she's like 17 he's like oh don't say that and then there's some talking he's like you know to tell you the truth you know to tell you the truth i really like the way your breasts (laughs) feel on my skin or whatever like pushing up against what are you saying bro what i've never seen that that's a crazy uh, thing to say let me try to find the clip because he also (sighs) kisses her on the mouth in the video you haven't seen the video i wonder if i can find it how old was he i mean i think it was when he was like brand new yeah but how old was he that's not what i was asking (laughs) how old is drake now uh probably 35 i don't know this YouTube, this video has been removed for violating YouTube's terms of service. Bro, it really is a conspiracy, bro. Drake is really taking everything down. Every link here is removed from YouTube. <laughs> Yo, that's crazy. What? I found one. I found one. I found one. It's really Hold a conspiracy. Up. I got one. I got one. Drake tried, but we got the it's clip. It's awful quality, though. Oh, my God. But I guess this is what we got to deal with oh, to watch no. it. This is the clip. I'm gonna turn down the audio a little because it's like not good. What the? Y'all make some noise for Tia from Denver, y'all. You look very nice tonight, by the way. I like curly hair. I like you. Stand right there. Just give me like two seconds. I'm gonna get ready for you because I gotta be ready for you. Okay, so you can see here they're like hugging and dancing and shit. Okay, yeah, well, that audio is just useless. Uh, so they're might, dancing. I mean, anyway, yeah. Drake's young as shit right here, dude. Like it's a long time ago. But then he's like talking to her at the end, and it gets creepy. She said seventeen. I want to get him kissing her real quick. Oh, bro. I just want to thank you. On the mic. Why do you do? Why do you do like the Holy Trinity, bro? What the fuck was that? Yeah, sorry for that audio, but Drake is teaming oh, with terrible. UMG and Lucian to get all these videos removed because they're literally all on, not on YouTube. Like, how? How does that go against terms of service? How? It doesn't. It probably doesn't. That's, Drake, I'm on Kanye's side at this point. Drake, that's not, that's bullshit. You that can't get that taken down. But yeah, that's, that's a weird like, video, too. That's, that's a bad the video. Main, that's the main Drake Yeah, it's a pretty bad evidence. video. It is. Damn. It's also pre me too. Like it is old. Like the world I mean, isn't wasn't is what it is now. Like just to play devil's advocate, it wasn't. I mean, yeah, people. obviously, but like, damn. Yeah, she's <laughs> that's seventeen. A that's a crazy they're thing. Like, that's crazy. But, they're rubbing yeah. up on each other, and then he. That's, asks her all that's she beside the, the music fact. point. So yeah. Yeah, it's just um, like no comment, I guess. So that's like the thing that people think he'll come after drake for but i just feel like it's not going to be as damaging as exposing a hidden i don't know it could be you think what if there's more yeah maybe maybe there's more maybe there is more who knows like there's gotta be more dude that's that's what there's fucking 10 there's 10 people coming at him bro there's gotta be something good on this motherfucker bro like there's gotta be like a straight nuke. there has to be a nuke a red button for drake there has to be like you know what i'm saying there has to be one thing that all these motherfuckers know and they're teaming up on him for, but nobody said it yet. Nobody aired it out yet. What is it? That's worse than a, his kid. Yeah. How? It's gotta be. I bro, just don't know what it could be. Forget his kid, bro. Why are why are why is the entire rap industry going against him? I feel like it's jealousy. I really do. No. I'm, 
half the fucking industry doesn't just gang up on you because fucking jealousy. Hell no. He had to have done the, something. The he, why there is Cole has on be... his side who has maybe the best moral compass of any rapper? How was Cole? First of all, Cole might not know. Second of all, maybe. Cole might not be even on his side. You know what I'm saying? They could have done the, the contract the agreement for the, the, the tour or whatever, but I don't know. Just to be just to be a little conspiratorial. I just feel like if that's all that the dirt on Drake is this one video of him kissing a 17-year-old 15 years ago. Like, yeah, that's really weird and a problem. Like, it is weird, but that can't be it. There has to be more. That's what, I, that's what I'm saying. I think there's something. There's got to be something, bro. Yeah, has to be. Well, I guess we'll see. Another week mm-hmm. goes by. No response. Maybe next week we'll have something. Okay. Maybe next week. Maybe next week. There are more disses and beefs going on in the rap game right now we of course have talked about this one before there's been some back and forth Quavo and Chris Brown taking shots back and forth releasing tracks towards one another so there's another new one because the most recent one that we talked about on the show was uh Chris Brown basically saying R.I.P. take off when he died everybody wished it was you essentially and that was yeah. like blew up the internet that was like the last thing we talked about so we got right. a response from Quavo and it features takeoff which it i does. thought was dope the posthumous verse yeah chorus hook um yeah and it's fire it is i <laughs> liked it actually i just would never imagine quavo is like a battle rapper or a diss rapper it just doesn't no, work did. right he, like with his he does voice spit, no yeah he does like he's got bar- like even though like even if i heard quavo go on a beat and like say some super mischievous diss shit I just feel like his cadence doesn't allow me to make it sound like it does. He's that just is like true. so upbeat and trap like He's more know. like he's like laid back type. You know what yeah. I mean? Like Yeah, it's more of a vibe. His his voice is more of a vibe than like serious. No, yeah, we know Chris Brown's. It doesn't, about it doesn't it. give yeah, it doesn't right. It doesn't give like a serious tone, like you said, but Yeah, it just shitty saying though. Yeah. You just have to really take into account Quavo out here going back and forth with a wait. Uh, okay, gotcha. That's just a lyric. Quavo out yeah. here going back and forth with a singer that turned to a junkie, crackhead Michael Jackson. Bitch, you better beat it. I mean, that's pretty. Yeah, funny. that's awesome. That's awesome. Do you I think mean, Chris any... Brown's our generation's Michael Jackson? Or would you our say, like, generations. The I mean, I don't think there is our generation's Michael Jackson. To be honest. What do you mean? Like the a pop male pop star who I don't know how to describe it. Like Drake. if you had to. Drake, I mean, touching on young but girls Drake, and shit, yeah, <laughs> right. But Drake <laughs> doesn't Kali dance, Kalkin-esque. so maybe, may I mean, maybe Chris Brown. Who knows? How, like, do you like Chris Brown's music? Uh, well, his diss track against Quavo was really good. It was, and good. he's got, I mean, he's got some smackers here and there, but overall, right now, as a rap rapper for a Quavo, for surely. Yeah, like, if there was two new albums, Quavo and Chris Brown, like, I'd much listening. rather listen yeah, to Quavo. Quavo. Yeah. Didn't there, didn't a new Chris Brown album just drop, and that's where this one disc was, and we didn't even re- yeah. review the album? Yeah, no, we didn't. Is it a rap album, or is it, like, an R&B No, album? it's probably R&B, yeah. Okay. I mean, but Chris Brown's first album is, like, a masterpiece when he was 16 years old, and he has bangers, but, like, it's, you hit Rihanna, you, you lose. Since this, uh... Over Hoes and Bitches, I think that's what it's called. The diss track against uh, Chris Brown from Quavo. Since mm-hmm. the diss track drop, uh, Chris Brown went on Instagram and said, what the fuck was that? It's essentially, he essentially said uh, it's not even worth responding to. So this yeah, might be the that. end of the beef. And if it is, I guess, who you got taking it? Hmm. That's tough. I kind that's of feel like one, Chris right? Brown. You think so? With the, t- like just the one takeoff on, line? Based on the two tracks that we have, or how what like the few tracks that we have, I feel just like Chris Brown's are stronger. Even though I like Quavo more, I just feel like if you just went songs, I think Chris Brown would be declared the winner, like if you did a vote Democrat. Yeah, maybe. Well, I guess technically, Chris Brown only threw a line in, and then Quavo released a whole track, so it's kind of two to one. Like, yeah. Quavo's kind of got two full tracks to one. Right. Um... I don't know. Chris Brown's track was really good, but I think I would go Quavo. The crackhead Michael Jackson shit is really funny. I mean, that is hilarious. I just, oh man, this era of hip hop in that so we're in good, right now. So good, dude. Holy shit. 
We gotta what's happening? What the fuck know. is what's in the water? And also, just a little quick thing. Uh, there was an album that was in the air. Uh, not really sure what was going to happen with it. The JID and Metro collab album, because obviously the beef with Drake and everything, you know, J. Cole being coincided with Drake. Um, it is confirmed to be happening from Metro himself. So there we go. Yeah, we We're are officially getting a JID Metro Boomin collab album. Yes, sir. Yes, and sir. He didn't, even, he didn't even make it seem like maybe. He was like, it's coming. He said, like, yeah, was, 100%, essentially. Yeah, like, that's exciting. Hell yeah, we, bro. Of course, we got Eminem, Four Bats, two more Vultures projects, like, Kendrick album. What would Sheen Gun do, too? We got yeah. a lot of shit. And also, another album that was just uh, announced this week is Conway the Machine is also dropping a new album, SFK, Slam Face Killer. Here we go, bro. We're in it now. I, yeah, I saw. Is there? Isn't the date for that May tenth? It's not next week, but it's the week right after. I'm, uh, sure I'm not sure coming. what the date I is, think, but yeah, we'll definitely be listening to that. So, I but yeah, next week is Four Bats <laughs> dropping. You made me a star's debut album under OVO Sound. We've talked about Four Bats since he blew up. We got a uh, Vultures two apparently next week, and then yeah. May tenth, <laughs> the week after that, I believe is the Ice Spice project. That's kind with the Machine project. So like. This week, the albums that we're reviewing are not super hip hop. They're like kind of adjacent, but like almost every week this year, we've had like a banger album to review every week. Yeah, bro. Like it's been really, really good. Did, we really picked the perfect January to start reviewing. Just albums. it's crazy, right? But now that we're doing <laughs> reviewing all rap albums and tier listing them and ranking them all, like I wish we've done it for twenty years. Forever, like there's so many right? albums I wish. Like, damn, I wish we listened to that when it came out and, like, talk about it and review I know. Like, yeah, so me many. Too. Like, experience like, it. Sicko Mode or Astroworld. Because, like, I mean, I, crazy we've albums. always been, like, hip-hop fans or whatever, rap fans, but we were never, like, tapped into the scene, like, you know, super tapped in. Like, like ready for drop dates drop. and shit. Like, yeah, exactly. Like, surprise we, drops, we were there. And, like, listening to full discographies or even full albums, like, front to back and shit like that. You know, like, we were just there for vibes, you know, always huge fans and shit, but... I do wish that, you know, we always took it a bit more seriously because there's a lot of good shit out there, bro. It's crazy. How, do you, I mean, now I know you do, but like, how, what's your preferred way to listen to an album? Just like, do you like back. to, no, you, you don't like sloppy. to go in and listen to the singles first and then front and nah. back? Because like, is that how an artist intends you to listen? Because they release the I don't know. first. Right. I, so I like, don't are you like supposed singles? to listen to those? I feel like I don't like singles for that reason. Like, I just want, I feel like I should listen to the album Track one, two, three, you know, like, in order. I firmly believe that. 100%. Yeah. But, like, why put out a single if it's not song one? Just pr to promote your album. Why not make them song one, then? You know? Like, and some albums aren't easy. even really meant to listen. You know, some albums don't have a full concept like that. Some albums can be listened. Uh, <laughs> Mac and Cheese uh, 5. <clears throat> right. Uh, uh, song three to song 12 to song seven. to You know, you can jump all over the place, but... You know, some albums you need to listen to uh, song one to song ten. Speaking of that, and speaking of Kendrick, you know Kendrick Lamar's album, Damn, his highest streaming album, right, I believe, is Damn? Yeah, I believe so, there's, yeah. If you go on Kendrick Lamar's Apple Music and you look at his albums, there's Damn, 2017, yeah. with whatever, 13 or 14 songs. And then there's a collector's edition, which is a revamped track list. Which, there's no extra songs, there's no nothing. They just reordered the track list, and they just put it in reverse. It. Interesting. Like, is... I gotta listen to I'm, it that way, I haven't... I, I've never I, seen that before. I feel like I have, like, I've I've heard of albums, like, being, uh, like, intended to be listened to back to front, like, backwards. Hmm. I've heard that, but never both ways that's interesting yeah i didn't i don't think i've ever heard of that and i was just like looking through his discography and i was like huh collector's cool. edition is just duckworth is first and it just goes in reverse that's so weird. i didn't know that actually yeah uh, also while you're here before we hop into some album reviews we're going to eventually start listening to a full artist discography and ranking them and reviewing whole discographies we're starting off is a secret where we're starting is a secret but if you have suggestions secret, on artists it's it. no it's a secret i was thought about saying it but i'll wait <laughs> but if you have suggestions of artists you want us to listen to their whole discography and review and rank all the albums 
let us know. It will do. Yep. It. Yep. We're gonna do First all one the will big be coming ones. here soon. Next couple of weeks for sure. We're doing all the big ones. Like we're gonna go all oh, the way I back mean, in yeah, time. Yeah. All the oh, legends, shit. all the goats, all the futures, Drakes, Eminem, like all of them. Everything. Got a good looking hand right there. Wow. Thanks, bro. That's nice. You ever Pretty had Pretty HD, huh? Yeah, it's not bad. That's my hand. Nails did. Yeah, I need a, a manicure. Okay. Are you ready? Which album do you want to talk about first? Um, Sorry, okay. just trying to I fix guess I my should, angle. I guess um, I'll I see which albums we listen to. Yeah. So, oh well. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. We listened to the new Blade album, Cold Visions, which is he's like a I believe he's a Swedish like cloud rapper is how we landed on describing it. He's like yeah. with Young Lean, Drain Gang, Tie Boy Digital, yeah. all these guys. Drain. Blade I mean a Drain new... rapper. <laughs> I yeah, guess that's that's like, like their genre, so. Click is Drain Gang. Yeah. Uh, like the odd future of Sweden, basically. And then we have yeah. Party Next Doors, Party Next Door Four, P Four. Who is signed to OVO Sound actually? Tons of songs with Drake through the years. So, those are the two albums we got today. None of them are like boom bap hip hop, but they're adjacent. Let's let's do Blade first. Let's do the Blade. Album. Mm, I was thinking Party Next Door first. First? Okay, that's fine. Yeah. We can do that first. We can do All right. That. Okay. Well, let's hear it. Let's hear it. I, okay. All right. Real quick before we jump into it, I liked one of these albums much more than the other one. Me too. <laughs> <clears throat> okay. Well, <laughs> I don't know. I wouldn't say much more. They were both all right. But yeah, 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 I'll go first on this one. Okay. Um, I thought it was good. You know, R&B, Party Next Door. Not, yeah. I mean, a good vibe, just a vibey album. You can listen to a late nights type shit. Um, but nothing really stood, like nothing stood out that was crazy to me. I did like a few tracks on there, though. Let me, uh, let me know which ones you really, really like. Do you have a favorite song? Um... No, I, I wouldn't favorites. say I have a favorite song yet. I only listened to it fully through once, so I'm not like that perfect with it. Um, I liked Resentment. The ending track I thought was really good. Mm-hmm. Um, when you're listening to albums, how are you keeping track I think Cheers. of what songs you like? Cheers like, I liked a lot. Well, so just, it's different because some albums I'm more into than others. You know what I'm saying? This album was kind of playing in the background. I wasn't like super tapped into this album. Like, You know what I'm saying? For... For example, like a, uh, I don't know, like a more, uh, sure, a more lyrical album, like, I want to sit down and, like, listen to, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Even though we don't trust you, but, like, a party next door, I'm I'm throwing on to kind of just vibe to, so that's kind of what I did. I kind of just threw it on, had it on in the background type shit, so I was kind of not really looking at the track list as I was listening, which kind of is a bad way to listen to an album, truthfully, but um yeah, like, i did like something... cheers there was a few that stood out though cheers was good the last one uh stood out and lose my mind i thought i think yeah. was the third one but i believe lose your mind is now party next door's second most streamed song because it was a single it's been out for a little while but make it to the morning and her old friends are my two favorites on the album got you i was just curious like when you're listening to an album like what's your method of keeping track of what songs you like are you just like taking notes yeah. in your notepad well, it's different. Sometimes it depends on how I'm listening. Like if I'm listening on the computer, like then yeah, I'll just I usually just add it right to the playlist, right to my playlist. Like if I'm really fucking with it, the, I'll add it right the, to the playlist. I love the favorite feature because like yeah. I can just click a star on the ones I like, and then they just you know I just didn't yeah. know like what your process was, but yeah, yeah, but like for like for this album, I really didn't. I wasn't really paying attention to the tracks that like the track list that much to be honest i was kind of just listening and i was vibing like it was a good vibe but it was nothing like crazy you know what i'm saying to me so and maybe i'm sleeping like maybe i need to listen deeper but no i would kind of agree like there was some songs that i really did like and was vibing to and like were a little funky but a lot of them are like they just fall victim to not being rap they're just like slower and vibey and chill it's just like they just they, don't get me hyped like i feel like a lot of r&b in my brain for some reason just the sound of all of it just melds together like i feel like i've listened to too much r&b in the past couple months to really like enjoy more r&b do you know what i'm saying like yeah it's hard like, it's hard for me you could have told me this was a tyler album i'd be like yeah makes sense right and i like r&b <laughs> like i really do but like that's the thing that's why i love hip-hop so much is the variation like you can listen to a, pl- a pl- you can go from a playboy cardi to a nas to a whatever the fuck but you know and not saying there's not variation in r&b that's not what i'm saying at all but i'm saying like in my mind that's just how my brain processes it i don't know 
We need to train our ears more in R&B, which we are going right. to do. We're, we're trying. We're currently we're are doing to R&B that. albums. There's yes. R&B albums all over this tier list already. Yes. And some of them are high ranked. But yeah, there's some great, there's some good to great songs on here. Nothing it's too a good crazy, vibe, like though. you said. Yeah, I it like... is a good vibe. The production is really good. There's no like choppy audio or anything like that. Like it sounds great. Definitely a yeah. love making type album. Oh, like for the sure. song with a lady. Up. You're all up in there. What what tier are you leaning? You're all up. Don't say that. Um, I what don't did know. I say? You said you're all up in there. Don't say oh. that. <laughs> yeah, I wish I didn't. Why say would that. you say that? <laughs> it's a horrible thing to say. I wish I didn't. You're I right, mean, but... straight up, I'm going good, not great somewhere. 100%. Which sucks I because I feel like it's going to get so crowded there. I mean, but, yeah. I mean, but over time. To. That's like I the middle. over time, yeah. I yeah. mean, that's the, you know, good, not great. It's fine. It's, you know, like it's it fine. makes sense that that's getting filled right. up. Right. We didn't feel one way or another about it, I guess. Really. Yeah. I but guess that's really hot. There's a songs that I like. I mean, that's not speaking for all of these albums because I definitely like more like some of these albums more than others like yeah nine by Kenny mason definitely near the top tyla definitely close to the top that texas tech near the top but for this one are you below tyla above tyla are you below bk the ruler are you over there at the young mm. lead and blade project like where are you thinking this one's hard dude yeah i agree i think you I know, know for me I'm honestly at. I think I'm going to be that guy and go not good enough. Like, I'm at the bottom, bro. For me, like, I, it's just, I don't know. Again, I listened to it once. Wasn't even listening to it like I probably should have been. But as of right now, like, I, I'm not going to, like, I don't want to give a false review. You know what I'm saying? Like, asterisks around this review. But we move some stuff that's around? how I'm currently feeling. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah, definitely. I want to put, I agree right here at the top of not good enough i want to put meek mill down here as well and young lean and blade down here hmm. see that meek mill one is tough because we did get a great future verse we got a couple of good verses on there but yeah i guess ultimately probably not good enough ultimately it's also only five songs yeah I just feel like that, just looking at albums now, I'm like, this album I think is better to me than this Young Lead and Blade album. The Party Next Door one. Do you feel that way? I don't know. I don't know if I feel that way. Flip them? Mm. Well, let's see. Do we think it's better than Bryson Tiller? I put it right around the same <clears throat> for me. I, th- I, prefer, I think I prefer Bryson Tiller. And then I think I prefer the Young Lean and Braid, Blade over Bryson Tiller, though. You think? I think okay. that's where I would probably... Uh, I don't know. Maybe... You know, that Young Lean and Blade might go between them straight up. Is that where I just had it? I think so. Maybe not. No, you had I it feel... behind Party okay. Next Door. I think I feel a little better. Do we move Yachty down? Something ether, nah. Okay. Because it's got some really good verses on there, some good yachty verses, and it's got a secret recipe. That one song is holding it down. I can't get Um, over that song. Any other things that you want to move while we're here? There's. How's it looking? I I guess that's good. I mean, yeah, yeah. I mean, the Melly project could probably go down a little bit, but I was vibing with that, so I don't want to move it. Yeah. Yeah, that's kind of what I was thinking. You know, I guess I was thinking the other day, like, we should go back and, like, revise this at the end of the year or something. Like, Oh, yeah, we will for sure. I mean, we obviously go through it week to week like we just did. I mean, we do that every week essentially. But I think end of the year or something, we need to do, like, a big listen through of all of them and fucking revise the shit. I think if you listen to the P4, I guess is what we'll call it because that's what it's abbreviated as, Party Next Door 4. I think if you re-listen to it, you might want to move it up. Because I think if I was doing this Probably. by myself, I might put it in good, not great. Like and that goes for melody. a lot of these albums. Like, they do fall victim to the one listen through shit. You know, like the one listen through. It's that, like, a lot of rap music is not meant to be listened to one time. 
But I mean, it it just is what it is. Some shit I'm gonna go back to more regularly than other shit. You know what I'm saying? Some shit I will listen to one time and be like, eh, I'm yeah, not really gonna like, listen to that again. You know what I'm saying? Like you, the like sad boy, from the sad boy John later, or whatever, though. for example. Yeah, but if you put on might delete later and you're like, you're gonna like wait and pause and be like, oh wait, this is good. I have to pay attention. So if an album's not forcing you to do that, maybe it just isn't as good for me as might. anyway. Yeah, because some people will prefer. That's the thing about our tier list is we're not ranking which album is best. We're ranking right. which albums we prefer more. You know what I'm saying? Like, and for me, like, I'm gonna uh, almost 100 percent of the time, unless it's like a bad album, I'll probably I'll almost always prefer like a hard, like you know, a more lyrical rap over like an R&B, which just is what it is. It's just what I prefer. And you know, the greatest R&B. Uh, album of the year could come out and it'll probably you know wouldn't go at the top of my list probably you know what i'm saying yeah that's why i am excited for the four bats project next week because yeah. it is r&b but it's also like more hip-hop infused I and that's like. something like i'm like mix. actually that's like an rb artist like i'm almost kind of invested in at this point like i'm actually interested in i feel the same way because we yeah. listened to his first few singles when they dropped. This is his first project. Like we're buying in at the start. Like yeah. We're following him from the beginning. It makes it feel more exciting. Yeah. I was never really a Party Next Door fan. Like, this is the first album I think I've listened to front to back. But yeah, I didn't like 100%, it. It just wasn't, too. like, mind-blowing. No, and that's the thing. It falls victim to my to, to the small brain, small music brain. I mean, yeah. you know what I'm saying? It, like, it all falls under the R&B sound in my brain. You know what I'm saying? When I hear it. It goes in one year R and B. It comes out the other year R and B. You know what I'm saying? Like, I don't think. And obviously, I'm, project will I'm dissecting the lyrics a bit. You know what I'm saying? But not. You know, it doesn't. There's you know generally not as much of a story. You know, not as much storytelling. Not as much shit. You have to sit down like and rewind and be like, oh, okay, I gotta pay attention. Like you said, like it's more of a vibe, which I can yeah. appreciate it for. You know what I'm mm-hmm. saying? I'm not trying to fucking. I'm not trying to listen to. Uh, Sorry, I'm just trying to fucking stop lagging. I'm not trying to listen to Rap God every fucking moment of my life. You know what I'm saying? I'm trying to vibe out in the car and shit. And I will. And these albums I will listen to. Yeah. But for the, you know, for the most part, I'm listening. That, that's why I like our, I think our tier list is pretty decent so far. Because that's me pretty much s- like. Can we make a shared Apple Music playlist, an R&B one? An R&B one? Yeah, sure. Cause I got. Yeah, we'll just we'll throw all the best R and B songs that we can find on a playlist, and then we'll just share one. Yeah, and I'm not saying all R and B is the same. Like a lot of people no. will probably hear my shit and be like, "That's what I'm saying," but it's just in my brain. That's like it's just I don't know, right? Yeah. I don't know. I'm all, but I I feel the same way. Like the same yeah. thing happens to me, and I do. I'm trying to expand my musical horizons. Yeah. So maybe we should just make a playlist for different genres. But I can definitely dissect because. Like, uh, the Tyler album, I definitely preferred over the Party Next Door album, Same. in my mind. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm Her saying? They're both, something. I mean, I don't know. So, well, and maybe I'm that's hot you, take. Maybe people don't like that take, but I'm uh, that's actually curious because that's like when I'm going into it, that's what I'm comparing it to in my mind. I so, said, I mean, it that's good, the most like, similar question, thing right? we've listened to. I'm like, how does this compare to the most yeah. recent R&B album I listened to, the title one? Like, that's what I'm subconsciously. What else? Comparing. What are their arm? The Bryson Taylor is R&B. Um, yeah, and then Four Bats next week. I think that's and, really it. So, and that's kind of why I prefer Bryson Taylor a little bit more over. Um, Party next door. Yes, P4 is because he's rapping a bit more on it. There's a bit mm-hmm. more like actually spitting on it, which I prefer. So. Yeah, they're just more dynamic than a regular right. r&b song there's just right. more going on i'm with yeah. you all right next we got blade cold visions we actually have reviewed and ranked a blade album already this year it was Which a collab is, ep yeah. with young lean this is and the young first lean is artist. all over this project this is the first artist to have two no nope. projects is it not future metro oh i guess yeah yeah okay never mind. That, yeah i'll take no, back what right, i said though. That's crazy. Oh, besides that, though, it. yeah. So, what would you think? Because um, we we did we did the Blade and Young Lean a few weeks ago. There was like eight songs. This is a thirty-song Blade yeah. project with Young Lean features on like fifteen songs. 
I but there's like a, a lot of filler of, and shit. On here. There's a lot of trash. Take. Yeah, you go first. Go ahead. Well, okay. First thing, when I click on an album and there's 30 songs, you've already lost points. It's too many. Yep. We keep saying this every week. If you're gonna put on an album, we need 10 to 16 max. We don't want 30. And Los it's only Taylor an hour runtime, but that's still too long. Yeah. It. 30 songs is too much. If you have 30 songs, get rid of the 10 you hate the most and give us 20. Like, we don't need 30. We don't need 40-second outros and interludes. Like, clean We appreciate it. As fans, we appreciate all the music. You know what I'm saying? But we just want cohesive pieces of work that we can put on our wall and be like, this is a piece of art. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And this is not that. No, I wouldn't call it that. <laughs> but I will say, uh, going in, when I th- see 30 songs, and it's also like Blade, like a music genre that isn't really my cup of tea like i get why it's cool and like why people like it but it's not like i don't have a playlist for cloud rap like cloud this just drain isn't... rap industrial yeah. experimental soundcloud yeah. you know it's, a, just, it's, it's an interesting genre it's not my typical vibe and i went in kind of weary but like there was actually a few hand like a good handful of songs that i enjoyed and actually liked like i did like more than i thought i would on it honestly me too me too honestly and this is an album where it has a lot of differentiation in sound for me mm-hmm. you know what i'm saying for from a uh you know more of a sad um i don't know what you want to call it a sad boy fucking like that's such a cringy fuck that's how i would like genre it honestly you know what i'm saying like there's a few songs that are more sad vibes and then there's songs that are you know, more braggadocious and spitting. And then there's songs that are like heavy production. There's songs that are like uh, almost clubbish. You know what I'm saying? There's, you know, there's a lot of different sounds on here, which I appreciate. Um, I was going to say, I think that's what I appreciate most about these guys is how experimental they are with their different sounds. Like they don't just do one thing. I will say though, if you got rid of like the uh, sad genre, I would like the album so much better because almost like, Almost every time, like, a uh, a sadder melody came on, like, I wasn't really wa- rocking with it as much as, like, one, more of the braggadocious, yeah. uh, just more upbeat uh, songs on the album. So that's that's my main criticism, is that less sad, more upbeat. Um, and there was, there was some really questionable production choices on this album. There, I'm not saying, like, I like... I liked a lot of the beat uh, choices. Like, a lot of the beats were really good. But some of the production choices were so weird. Um, yeah. I'm trying to I think mean, that's... of what the song was. But there was something that was like, I heard it. I was like, what the fuck was that? Like, that was so odd. And I feel like also, that's kind of their thing. Yeah. Is the super crazy weird out right. of the world. And that's though. what kind of makes it stand out. But also, it's like, what? But, um, and then my last criticism is, like, just some of the delivery where Blade or Blade... Uh, Blade, blade right? yeah. Bladey? People Fuck. call him that as a meme, but it's Blade. People call him that as a meme? Yeah. Like, I, seen that, I was like, what the I fuck? I was just listening to Bladey. Drang, right. gang, motherfucker. Blady, you know, right. Say that. <laughs> okay, but yeah, Blade. So, uh, uh, shit, what was I saying? I like just more the upbeat songs. Um, Where are you thinking on the tier list? Do you have a tier in mind? Yeah, I have something in mind. I had a point to make, though, but I can't remember. Crazy production? Like, weird Oh yeah. Production. Oh, yeah. And I feel like there was a there was a couple uh, times where the, the delivery in the raps was was not good. They're like all... Not, I won't say not good, but not my cup of tea, which I feel like if a lot of that was cleaned up, more cleaner, you know, cleaner production, a little bit of that, like, it'd be a, be a better album, obviously, but... Yeah, the vibe I get when I'm listening to, like, a Blade or a Young Lean or an Echo 2K or a Thai Boy Digital, these Drang Gang artists, I just feel, like, I get, I think it's also what makes it cool to people, though. Like, when you're listening to it, it sounds like, okay, a group of kids made this in their bedroom with a shitty mic and a laptop. Kind of, yeah. Like, it has similar vibes to me, like, old, odd future shit. Yeah, like, I it's mean... crazy, the production's, like, shitty quality, it's weird mixing, there's, like, fucked up shit, but, like, it... I feel like that is also what makes it appealing to kids. Yeah, and like for why sure. people think it's cool. That's a good point, definitely. But, but like, yeah, you're right though. The production is not yeah. like a Drake album. It's like, a it given it's sound. You know good. what I'm saying? Like they're yeah. All right. Well, let's get up this tier list then. Tell me where you're at. 
I, I, I just want to point out a few songs that I liked real quick. Sad Meal, yeah. I thought was really great. Um, Message to Myself, I thought was good. King Nothing was probably the best flow I heard on there. Flexing and Finessing, I thought was good. Those are just a few of my favorites real quick. I liked Flatline a lot, actually. I think That was only four song number four on there, but Flatline was one of my favorites. And then, yeah, King Nothing, uh, Terrible Excellence I liked with Young Lean. I don't like people with Young Lean. Like, actually, DOA with Skrillex, like, I kind of fucked with that song. Yeah, and that's Maybe, the thing about this album. I think it's because like, the production was higher quality, probably. That's why I liked it. I was like, oh, this sounds like a real song. Right, 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 probably. And that's the difference between this album and, you know, a, a P4, for example. Like, you can be hearing this out. Like, you'll play this album in the background front to back. And while you're typing or doing something, the, you know, the the vibe from a song, like, I don't know. What's what's a good example? Like, uh. I don't know, from a one second to a sad or, you know, where it goes from a sad vibe to like a more upbeat vibe from one song to another. You know what I'm saying? You're able to like be like, oh, OK, this is interesting. What kind, what song is this? You know what I'm saying? They don't all kind of just meld together in your mind, which I yeah. think that's I think you got to give them bonus. props for. Yeah. yeah, I agree. So uh, where you, what tier are you thinking? First of all, we'll do tier first and then decide where it wants to go in the tier. I don't think it's don't waste your time. No, definitely if, not. I'm leaning not good enough to good, not great on the cusp in there somewhere. I would say good, not great. Okay. Because I think it's better than, um, fuck, what was their previous album called? Um, fuck. I mean, are you looking? Because I actually don't know off the top of my mind. Psychos. Yep. Psychos. I think it was better than Psychos, personally. I think that, I well, Cycles is only eight songs. So, see, that's the thing, too. It's yeah. like, if an album is eight songs, and there's six good songs on it, or songs that you really like, like, that's a great, that's a good ratio. Right. But if there's a 30-song album, and you like... It's 10 or 11. 12 songs. Right. Which album's better? Exactly. That's the problem I have. Right. Because I think I like more songs on this than Psychos, but it's four times as long. Yeah, but... Like, is that a cheat like, code? I feel like Psychos might be meant to be more, like, put together. Yeah. But, like, that's not... For me, like personally, I'm not really going to them to listen to something that crazy. You know what I'm saying? I yeah. feel like they're somebody i'll listen to you know uh, every a song every few whatever like i feel like this this album has more replay value for me and that makes it better for me I, i'm with you i agree but i do have the same dilemma going through my mind when i'm listening to a 30 song it sucks that has yeah 10 good songs yeah right so where on good not great because i'm not opposed to putting it here i'm honestly i was always a thinking like when we listen to these weird experimental rap projects that maybe you haven't listened to as much i always feel like you're not gonna like them i'm glad you liked this more than like don't waste your time i mean listen i'm always i'm open to listen to shit and some shit i like more than other shit but they're just know. pretty out there obviously i mean some shit is just hard to listen to <laughs> yeah i'll just be honest but uh, i mean nothing is made don't waste your time yet so not yet not yet is it above um, Melly? Above something Ether? Where are you at? Uh, nah, I think I would leave it below something Ether. I think Ether is more. <sighs> See, this is another Melly? thing. It's five songs. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Something Ether is five songs, bro. And one song is tr garbage. So that yeah. means 20% of the album is ass. Yeah. I would say <laughs> you Cold, know what I'm Cold saying? Visions is probably about 25, 30% is ass, though. Yeah, it's probably about the same ratio. So yeah, I would leave right. it about there. I think. Okay. Um, Boom. above Melly. Uh, sure. Why not? Okay, because that's probably where I would put it. I think right yeah. around there. I don't. I don't right, hate well, that. There's the list. Let us know what you guys think. What we got wrong. What we got right. What albums are missing. And let us know, and we will review them and put them on the list. So, drop a comment and let us know. Yep. Well. Do you want to do our little segment? Yeah, let's do it. Okay. So we've prepared a segment to play here at the end of the episode. It's not like a game, but we're just going to kind of go through 
we don't trust you, and we still don't trust you. Kind of compare the albums, see which one is really the better album. Yes, sir. Which which album is actually better, scientifically? I'm excited. If you look at the streams, just basic objective stream numbers, we don't trust you blows we still don't trust yeah. you out of the water. I mean, it wise. makes sense, though. I existed for a longer time and it has the kendrick verse which blew up the game so yeah it's just and it it's, it was more hype more because it, it was released first you know what i'm saying so you know that first release always gets more hype right no yeah totally like vultures 2 will not stream as well as vultures 1 and i mean like, i i do think it's better album i mean let's just i mean we don't have to we've said that before yeah i mean i agree it's a better album okay so right now but I, I guess we're, that's why we're here. Maybe we'll get proved wrong right now. Well, I have the songs ranked from most stream to least. So we're basically, it just kind of helps us like comparing the most stream song on each album. We try to make it as fair as possible instead of going chronologically. So obviously, uh, We Don't Trust You. It's like that with Kendrick, Diss, to Drake. That's obviously the most stream song. It went number one. It was number one for three weeks. I think it still is right now. Is it? No, it's not. It got pushed by someone else. But it was number one. Everyone listened to it. It started the whole drama. And the number one stream song on We Still Don't Trust You is the title track, We Still Don't Trust You, which only which has is... 12 million streams. And, like, what? Maybe 20 words? You know what I'm saying? The we entire song. We Still Don't Trust You, five. I That's mean, it. but there's, there, <laughs> you know, The weekend spits a little, like, he yeah. spits a little something, but there's not a lot of words at all. I mean, yeah. this is this is not close. Like That is one of the best songs of the year. It's like that. And We Still Don't Trust You is my favorite song on We Still Don't Trust You. The title track is my favorite song. And that's like, fine. I was surprised it had the most, but I guess it's the first but song that you click on. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Them intro songs, you got to be careful, man. Sometimes they, yeah, they rack they'll up They'll sneak the their way out there, yeah. Yep. All right, well, number two on We Don't Trust You is Type Shit. And number two on We Still Don't Trust You is Drink and Dance. See, now it starts to get interesting. It's because a little closer. Drink and Dance like is drink a great dance. song. Great vibes. Mm -hmm. But Type Shit is also a great song. You got Cardi on there. You got Travis on there. Yeah. Where do you lean? Because I lean Type Shit, but I really did like Drink and Dance. I mean, I don't know. I feel like Type Shit is a better song. And right. for that, I'll say Type Shit. But, you know, in the next couple years, I wouldn't be surprised if I listen to Drink and Dance a lot more. I... I agree. I that I, I probably will too. Cause like it's just like a vibe. Yeah, exactly. That's the thing. The second album, like you can totally just throw it on and background noise. But if we're going better song, I think I I do think type shit is a better song. All right. Well, number three on we don't trust you is Cinderella, and number three on we still don't trust you is out of my hands. Cinderella. So, yeah, exactly. Cinderella kind of washes out of my hands. I so. We got three nothing. We yeah. don't trust you. So number four is We Don't Trust You, the title track. And number four on We Still Don't Trust You is Red Leather with J. Cole. Is this the first dub? For me, it is. For me, it is. I'm going Red Leather on this one. I'm with you. I wasn't sure how you okay. felt, but I agree. So it's Yeah, I mean, you got the Cole verse. I mean, you got a great uh, future verse. Mm -hmm. I mean, future, uh, multiple future verses. He spits for fucking five minutes on there. Then you got a good cold verse, good vibes all around. Great yeah, song. I was going to say it's a seven minute or song or whatever. That's the real seven minute drill right there. Right. Okay. Number five. This is a tough matchup. We got Young Metro versus Jealous. Mm. I mean, I got mm. Young Metro all day. I love that song. I'm going Young Metro. When I first listened to We Still Don't Trust You, that was like, I mean that's what track two I believe on the on this on the album and it really gets you in the mood. It, Jesus, it gets you ready for the album, and I was just vibing with it a lot more heavily. Jealous, I was vibing with a lot, but I do I'm like going, that one. It is a good one. Going on right, Metro. Number six, we got Ice Attack versus All to Myself. I'm going Ice Attack on this one. Me too, but I do like all to myself. The thing is, that's the thing. There's, they're all, they're really great songs, and yeah. this is really putting into perspective how great "We Still Don't Trust You" actually is, because it's really hard for a lot of these. And yeah. you know, we're going through them quick, but I kind of, 
you know, I think a, I don't know. a lot of it is just like when Metro gets his production going and Future's voice is just like such a vibe. So like, good. Any song they make, as long as they don't purposely make it shitty, like it's going to sound good to your ears, just like as a song, like just as sound, like it hits your ears and it sounds nice. Like yeah. it just does. I don't know. All right. Number seven, we got Slimed In versus This Sunday. I didn't really love This Sunday. Apparently that was supposed to be a beat for someone else. I think it might have even been Drake. This Sunday was supposed to be a Drake song. The yeah, beat. I believe. Something could be wrong, like but that. I believe there's a beat switch on her. Um, yeah. hmm. Slimed in. I. Two of the less, like two of the. Yeah. Stinkers. Mm-hmm. On the albums. Yeah. I, I guess for for the sake of it, I will go. This Sunday. Okay, that's fine, because so, I don't love either. So I'll, That's what, 5-2? Yeah. So, number 8, we got Claustrophobic against Love Bad Bitches. I got another dub for We Still Don't Trust You here. Me too. I'm I going with Bad Bitches. Uh, me too. I love that sure. song. I Great love song. Bad Bitches, and I love that song. Maybe the best hook on the album. Let's yep, go. That's, that's my opinion on it. Best hook. Uh, number 9, we got Running Out of oh. Time versus Nights Like This. This Good one matchup. killed me. This one killed me because Running Out of know. Time to me is like the best like vibey song on We Don't Trust You. Mm-hmm. And Nights Like This is probably my favorite song on We Still Don't Trust You. Also a vibey song. But I'm going Nights Like This. Such a great song. So me too. Good. I'm with you because I – that's yeah, if it's not the title track, that's my favorite. Uh, it's 5-4 right yeah. now. That's crazy actually. <laughs> I told number- you. Number 10, Fried Shia Vibe versus Amazing Interlude. I mean, it's Fried Shia Vibe. I'm going Fried, yeah. 6 4. Yeah. Number 11, Everyday Hustle versus Came to the Party. It's Everyday Hustle. <gasps> that beat is the best beat do. on I the mean, album. It, it is. Everyday Hustle is the better song, but Came to the Party is song. such a vibe, though. But I will give it to Everyday Hustle. Better song. The NBA used uh, Everyday Hustle for like their playoff commercial. I've seen that, yeah. That? I, something about that. But playoff man, that song just. Yeah. That man, that beat is just good, dude. Yeah, it's and great. Rick Ross it's great. spits on there. Rick he Ross does. kills it. Uh, number twelve, Magic oh, Don Juan God. versus Beat It. Such an, another tough matchup, man. Because two great songs. I might lean Beat It. I'll go I'm Beat not, It just for the sake of the argument. Right. Seven Sweet. five. I'm not, I'm not like I don't have a super strong opinion on that one, but I like Beat It actually a lot. Okay, number 13, GTA versus Right For You. Oh, I'm going, oh, this is tough. Because GTA is a real car banger, and Right For You is like the opposite. You got a uh, future going into like his real melodic bag. You got yep. a real interesting voice change, like voice manipulation from future on Right For You. Fuck, I'm going Right For You, man. I like I what he does with too. his voice. I like what he I'm does with his voice. Too. Yeah. I didn't think you would. I thought you would take GTA. So, yeah. I, I'm with you. All right. Uh, number 14. Oh. Ain't No Love versus Always Be My Fault. I low-key think I might be thinking of Always Be My Fault's verse. For the, what do you mean? For the other one, you mean? For, yeah. For what I... I think it's identical to what I just said. Because I think I was thinking of Always Be My Fault for Right For You. Because on Always Be My Fault, he does like... He's into his melodic bag. He like does a lot of voice ma- manipulation, like I just said. So for that reason, I'm going always be my fault. For the last one, right for you. Let me hold on. Let me just play I, a little snippet for myself, because yeah, because maybe I'm doing the same thing. I didn't listen to "We Still Don't Trust You" all the way through again, like today or anything. So it is a little cloudy. Okay. Um, I just needed a quick reset. Right for you, ain't no love. So are we taking GTA over right GTA. for you and then always be my fault over ain't no love? Yep. Okay. So it's eight six. Sounds good. And then we got number fifteen, uh Y T F W M versus Mile High Memories. I don't have a strong opinion here. So I'm I'm kinda gonna go where you're leaning, probably. Mmm, fuck. I'll probably go, what the fuck you mean on this one. Okay. 
that's probably where I would go, but yeah, I just don't have a really strong one there. Yeah. Uh, number 16, Seen It All versus Overload. Seen It All. Yep, that's where I'm at as well. And then number 17, Where My Twin At versus Gracious. I'm at Where My Twin At, probably. Yeah, Where My Twin At. And then we do have one more song on We Still Don't Trust You, One Big Family. It's a whatever song. It's the least streamed song out of both projects. It's a, I mean, it's a good song, though. But, it's I mean, also, keep in mind, you got a diss, too, that comes with Nobody Knows My Struggle, um, All My Life, Little Baby Feature, Crossed Out, Crazy Clientele, which might be the best song on both the albums combined. True. Show of Hands, which is an ASAP Rocky feature, and Streets Made Me a King. So, low-key... Wait, what's the score right now? 10-6. I say we give We Still Don't Trust You two free points for that. See, that's what's so tough, bro, is because We Don't Trust You, I feel like, is more refined. Mm -hmm. But there's so many good songs on We Still Don't Trust You. Like, it's, it's it's nearly a 10 out of 10 album. Like it's, it's, good. it's it is really, really good. great. Yeah. So what do you want to land on? I mean, it's ten to six. You said. I mean, Another yeah. Seventeen I mean, songs. Over. So it it is tough. We just did it for fun. I'm not gonna make an official assumption of which or acclamation of which one is better here, but yeah. I do I think, lean. We don't trust you. I think there's an argument to be made for both. To be honest. I'd agree. I think people are hating on. We still don't trust you, and they didn't listen to it. I mean, yeah, or they just are know. really into that one sound from Future and Metro, and they don't like the slower shit. But like, no. I really did like it. I don't know how you could listen to it and not like it. There's so many, like, it's such a vibe. Stop it. Yeah, when I get in my car and I crank it up to 38 max volume and I play, Stop we it. still don't trust you. I mean, I'm it. That's all like bangs. It, there's really, I I won't say no skips, but there's very few. There is very S- few. When it comes like straight up skip, yeah, not like, many. One big family, maybe gracious overload, like the least streamed ones, maybe. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. But but they're not like skips. They're just yeah, like they're not whatever. like terrible songs, no. Well, there you have it. That's our opinion on the two albums. We think they're both great. We rank them high on our tier list. If you've been watching, you know this. But we do give We Don't Trust You the edge when you compare song by song. If yeah. there's other albums I, you want us to look, compare song for song, let us know. We'll do those too. But if you take out the f- five weakest songs and replace them with the five best songs on this too yeah then you might it's close you might have an argument yeah i agree well that's it for this week make sure you're subscribed if you made it this far and you're not subscribed that's just ridiculous it's free it helps us a lot you can unsubscribe at any time if we annoy you so do it. Follow us on socials. We're here every week. We will be back next Tuesday. Maybe we'll be back in the middle of the week if Kendrick drops a song. So make sure you're ready because it's coming at some point. Any final words? No. I'll see you next right. week. Love you guys. We'll see you next week. Have a good one. Peace. It's off the top podcast. Got you laughing like you hit the gas pack. Show is crazy like you watching Mad Max. Every other podcast is mad whack.